Good day, my students. I am Dr. Ubaidullah Muhammad Bello of Department of English here in Nasara State University, Kefi. My course is ENG 215, and that is Advanced English Composition. This is just a continuation of the course you took while you were in 100th level or even let me say the courses you have been offered to take while in 100th level which are ENG 112 Basic English Composition 1 and ENG 122 Basic English Composition 2 so this is going to give you more idea of what you have been taught in previous classes of your hundred level consumption of the content of the courses and this is said to be advanced because it removes you from what you have known before to a kind of an advanced level of understanding because we now discover that okay at least the expectation lies on the fact that you have moved from one level to another and as such your faculties of thinking also have moved from one level to another okay the first topic now is speech writing speech or speech writing rather is a type of composition that is meant to be read before the audience it is mostly the art of putting language into written form which is aimed at oral presentation there are different postulations on the notion of speech or speech writing by different scholars but most of them agree that a speech yes is a piece of composition that is one Two, it has to be presented before the audience who are the consumers of the speech. And three, there must be a presenter who is to stand before the audience to do the presentation. Okay, now. Speech writing embodies two most phenomenal skills of writing and presenting before the audience in a given occasion. Although not all speeches are composed in written form before delivery, but against the backdrop of our aim here, our major aim here is the one that has to be written. But there are other exceptional cases in our communicative efforts or life where we do not need to be like having to write the speeches before presentations. As such, whatever it is if we are to deal with this one that has to do with the backdrop of our aim to write there are rules that accompany or there are principles or technicalities the writer would have to know before achieving the composition of an a kind of piece we refer to as a speech on this note it is essential to put into cognizance the typology of speech for us to know which one is supposed or is meant to be written down and which one or which are the ones that are not meant to be written down now types of speech speeches are classified based mostly on the situation or occasion at hand thus let us take the following one impromptu speech from the name impromptu whatever is impromptu is something that is unexpected something that someone does not plan for it something that you do not have any schema of doing it so this is the type of speech that is done written before delivery as the name implies it is described as a speech one gives without first-hand information or prior knowledge 
or even planning of any sort it is mostly ensued by the absence of an expected speaker that the person is called to deliver in or on their behalf to deliver it on their behalf which is strictly an emergency you do not know no first-hand information no prior knowledge you're just sitting down and the mc or master of the ceremony calls your name unexpectedly to deliver the speech that is in the absence of the expected speaker of that particular speech so this is mostly short and it is conversational in nature as a speaker is not fully prepared you will be interacting you'll be presenting the speech and be calling attention of audience even throwing some questions throwing some insights and, and, and the rest inserting some innovations to make it interactive because you are not ready to deliver it this is what we call impromptu speech the next one is extemporaneous speech anything expo extemporaneous is also something unexpected but what is the difference between impromptu and extemporaneous in impromptu we say it is an emergency you only hear your name being called for you to deliver no prior knowledge no first-hand information but this one if the expected speaker of that speech is not present the mc would approach you while sitting down sir please in the absence of so 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 person who is unavoidably absent we want you to give us your time and repertoire of knowledge to say one or two things to like replace this missing point of this person you see at least you have been told you can start brainstorming of what to say for a particular number of minutes before you are being called unlike that impromptu speech that you only hear your name your mind must not be even there and you have no option then to accept because they regard you as someone who can do it any anytime and for anything but this one is extemporaneous because you are being told you have a kind of a, a kind of an information that you do it but just the time before you are being called this is majorly the difference between impromptu speech and extemporaneous speech so however for instance unlike the impromptu speech the speaker is notified a few minutes before the talk when it is scrutinized that the expected speaker is unavoidably absent and the speaker is not fully equipped to talk hence they supply expressions during the presentation from the audience this type of speech is longer than impromptu speech because it is also conversational in nature and the person is just informed before they get called to come and deliver the next type is memorized speech this is unlike both impromptu and extemporaneous speeches as the name implies since the speaker is notified of the exercise and the occasion hence the speech is carefully and well planned and even written but the speaker or presenter memorizes hmm? he or she memorizes the speech and delivers it without holding any script let alone distributing any copies to the audience it is long and mostly not conversational as the speaker is well equipped for the exercise you have been told maybe a week before the occasion you have to prepare you have to plan you have to equip yourself it is not like impromptu speech it is not like extemporaneous speech it is called memorized because you have to memorize what you have written you don't hold any script when you do it you drop it somewhere okay and you don't even give copies to nobody would even notice that you have memorized it 
but definitely we will know it is memorized speech because you are not conversational in the nature of how you present because you are prepared actually unlike those ones we explained and this we say the presenter is well equipped as they go or embark on rehearsals to find out what to do and to prepare and get equipped before the presentation the last one and which is the backdrop of the aim of this course is manuscript speech from the name manuscript this is characteristically the same with memorized speech in terms of careful planning and writing after the topic or the topical issue is researched on however unlike memorized speech the speaker holds and reads the manuscript okay the manuscript can be dropped on the or uh, on top of the podium where the, the reader or the presenter or the person delivering the speech stands so that they read what they have planned and written okay and the speaker holds and reads word for word from the manuscript and even avails copies of the speech to members of the audience respectively while the speech takes place so you see this is very different uh, from the memorized speech as you have copy before you you read word for word and you even give copies to audience so that they follow what you are doing so every speech has what we call structures now structures of speech one we have title or heading this structure constitutes information such as the speech giver or presenter and their title the topic of the speech the occasion or the event the venue the date and the audience and note that content words must have their initial letters capitalized and when written in small letters apart from the content words or initials it should be underlined but when written in capital letters no underlining as we have explained when writing titles of formal letters okay content words must have initials underlined while function words are written sorry content words must have their initials capitalized while function words do not have their initials capitalized so the same rule there applies on writing the heading of your speech or the title of your speech for instance when you say the title of your speech is being a speech presented by dr augustine Unkumi. you see being that b since the word yes is not a content word but a function word but it is the starting word the b has to be capitalized that is when you're writing the title in small letters then being a speech that a is function word don't capitalize it the speech has s as its initial it has to be capitalized presented has p as its initial it has to be capitalized so all these are called content word by presented by that by has to do with a function word you do not capitalize anything the b remains in small letter and everything the b and the y must be written in small letters that is when you are writing the title in small letters and you must underline okay but if you do not want to go into this problem of which one is content words and which one is function word and how do i capitalize this or that close your eyes and put everything in capital letters okay now the next structure of a speech is introduction this is where the speaker grasps the attention of the audience as they prepare the audience's mind towards the content of the speech this is either by the use of an apt illustration or any say that is scintillatingly catchy of attention sometimes one starts with jokes relevant to the occasion at hand 
but however depending on the event if the event is not meant for entertainment then the the introduction is not to prepare itself in such a way that it uses a kind of catchy words that will show illustrations of jokes and whatever it depends on the event at hand the next structure is the body this is usually the longest part of the speech as it encompasses detailed discussion of the subject matter or the thematic preoccupation of the speech introduced in the preceding structure and what is the preceding structure in the introduction the introduction prepares the mind while the body develops elaborates and justifies the elaboration and it also pinpoints all that you have to say in the body should be where you lie your own discussions and this is very important as you may have even headings and subheadings depending on the nature of the speech and the nature of the occasion or event at hand the audience here gets to hear all that constitutes the topic itself and for this reason points are supposed to be organized logically with cohesive devices in order to show their relatedness cohesive devices like we mentioned there uh, has to do with words like therefore in spite of this or this and that nonetheless however all these are cohesive devices that you use in the body to show the unity of the paragraphs and the rest embedded in the speech the fifth and the last item is the conclusion this is basically where the speaker summarizes their main point embodied in the body of the speech audience should be able to be free of doubt of where the speaker's speech ends and at least be left with positive memories don't start you now introduce then you pinpoint some things in the body and the conclusion does not come to show where you are landing it is just like an aeroplane starting to flew into the sky before it in fact it starts to go into the sky it has to follow some some steps on the flu that is just to prepare now okay the movement on the ground is to prepare how it can kick up okay then when it goes up it does whatever it has to do passing countries passing um hills and forests or whatever this is the body the forest the hills the countries the whatever are the body it must have an end where it has to land it has to come down then that is the conclusion so don't allow your aeroplane in speech or your ideas we call aeroplane now to start in the introduction to go up in form of the body and it remains there the audience do not know where you even if it crashes even if it crashes it must come down in pieces that is the end or the conclusion so every speech must have the title okay the introduction the body and the conclusion and the conclusion so these are very important to be noted and um for us to sustain the variability of what we mean in terms of our achievement of writing a speech for different purposes at different occasions or events the next topic is minute writing minutes can be simply defined as an official document that gives a report of issues discussed in a meeting from start to the finish and which is usually prepared by secretary and later signed by the chairperson and the secretary as well when talking about minutes here we are not referring to the minutes of time mm -mm. we are referring to a document and we call it a minute because it has to do with a record of what ensues in a meeting in a discussion of a meeting okay and no normally prepared by the person we call secretary who is officially assigned for that purpose and after everything 
it gets signed by the chairperson, the chairman, or whatever, and the secretary to signs the document and for referential purposes. It is usually a composition that constitutes all the resolutions arrived at in a meeting, which are decisions that are taken after a matter that appears on the agenda is also discussed. Every minute has what we call features, features or structures of minutes. One, we have title. This is to give the readership the sense of what the minute is all about. It has to be what? Minutes of a meeting, okay? Minutes of a meeting of departmental board. You see, there's just something of this nature. Okay, or minutes of departmental board meeting of department of English or of faculty of arts. You see, this is a title. It gives the readership the the kind of the sense of what the entire minute is all about. The next thing is membership or attendance. As soon as you finish writing the title, what follows is the membership or the attendance. That is those people who are present in the meeting who are members of that particular meeting but there are or oh, there is a rule here every minute must start with the chairperson the cha chairperson's name must start for instance in faculty board meeting is chaired by the dean of the faculty so the dean's name should appear first then against it you write chairman or chairperson if the person is female or it can be female or male chairperson you have to indicate then all members of the particular meeting starting from for instance professors okay it goes in this hierarchy professors doctors then senior lecturers who are not doctors yet then other ones they have to follow based on the kind of the rank of the members of that particular board okay now after this membership there is a we call apology that is a we call apology sometimes someone who is part of the members of that particular board may have something very uh, unavoidable and that has brought the fact that the person couldn't make it to the meeting and the person sent his own apology then after the the membership the attendance of people who are present then those who sent their apologies would have to be created in a space then and to mention them so that the board would know that yes these people were not there and they have sent their own apologies so this is where we talk about a, a kind of a, a structure after the membership then the next one is absence those that are members of the particular board who are not present Therefore, they cannot be captured under attendance. And who did not send apology? That is, they do not notify their reasons for being absent. And the last, that is the following um, feature or structure is what? Absence. Then you mention the names of those members who are absent and do not send anything like apology. It is very important but apology and um absence as structures may not be there it depends on whether we have people that sent apology or people who are absent if everybody is present then no need of all these things but membership must be there the next one is opening opening here the writer mentions the declaration of the meeting usually by the chairperson okay which can usually be accompanied by let me say a prayer and the time at which the meeting begins so that is also 
very important. For example, the meeting began with prayers offered by Dr. Kaab Zaid and Dr. Amar Imran at 12 o'clock p.m. following the chairman's instruction. You see, this is an opening to mean that the chairperson has instructed some people who are members of the uh, board for meeting to like open the meeting with prayers. And that is it for this particular structure. The next one is reading of the previous minutes. If it is not the first minute uh, to be taken or first meeting of its kind of a particular uh, organization or institution, then there must be minutes that have been taken before this particular meeting you are into. Then you have to read the previous minutes and for members to see whether you have captured as a secretary all that have been ensued while discussion was taking place in the previous me meeting. So the minutes of uh, the meeting held previously is read, followed by noting of corrections by the members of that particular meeting. If there are corrections, then. If there are no corrections, then someone moves for uh, a kind of acceptance of this particular minute or adoption of the minute then another person a member in the meeting seconds to see yes it is approved and it can be documented for onward referential purposes officially the next item or structure or feature is matters arising this accounts for the issues raised in the previous meeting which are addressed before the new agenda of the meeting for instance in your previous meeting there are issues that uh, issues that we raised then here before matters arising okay you have to it you have to account for sorry in matters arising you have to account for those issues okay being raised previously in your meeting which are addressed you have to address them before you now introduce a new agenda for the present meeting you have to take minutes of being the secretary whose responsibility is to take minutes then the next thing is agenda this is where the new ideas of meeting of the day are enumerated which prompted or the members to to meet at that particular uh meeting of its kind the next thing after the the agenda is aob this is uh, an acronym as it stands for any other business it stands for any other business it denotes raising and discussing issues which are neither from the previous meeting nor the present agenda for instance in matters arising we see it accounts for issues raised in previous meeting that have to be addressed before this present agenda and present agenda has to do with uh issues that you gather for meeting about then aob is something neither from the previous meeting and that is also not in part of the uh, agenda presently at hand it is something somebody brings into focus in the meeting because of its relevance and or its own call for attention the next feature is um adjournment adjournment okay to adjourn is to end or suspend something until a later stated time here meetings are adjourned since issues may have strings of occurrences and thus a meeting may not suffice for their discussion in completion you cannot complete your discussion on some things so and to avoid making the meeting boring uh, you you now decide to end the meeting and for it to be adjourned till a later stated time so the effect of this has it that a member moves for the adjournment of the meeting while another person moves for secondment or seconds the meeting. The last item here in the features is closing. Here, the writer states the time at which 
the meeting ends okay and it is written and uh created for the chairman to sign and the secretary also to sign respectively it carries the chairman's name here and the secretary's name by the by by by, by the right by the right and um taking you back to the attendance or membership that is second feature i said it starts with the chairman's name or the chairperson's name then the last name should be the secretary's name irrespective of the class or the rank of that person it can be professor it can be doctor it can be just a staff okay it can be anybody but the name has to come last and the name of the chairperson first then members in between that is it for minutes writing as one of the composition kinds we have in english the next topic is memorandum this is yet another official means of communication which is just like a letter which is formal categorically and especially in terms of content and a few of structures okay memorandum is another way of saying a memo memo is a shortened form of the word memorandum okay so memorandum is looked at from different postulations by different uh writers or scholars and it is an official document that emanates from an office which usually has a two-folded uh papers one that is to bring attention to a problem and to solve the problem memorandum known also as a memo is a means through which a re it is a means through which a regarded okay uh it is regarded as a document i mean and it is used in the course of normal official duties to people or committees in order to provide them with information about certain issues or matters that bother the organization it means memo is unlike a formal letter okay this one is written and it can be pasted on notice board but we do not paste formal letters on notice board this usually is to re remind some members of a particular organization about something or to call their attention for something that is seriously happening or is expected of them to do within their own uh, limitations and in the course of their interactions within their own organization of effects and operation so mostly it can be pasted on board and it can just go around to the respected um uh uh let me say target audience we have what we call types of memorandum one is internal memo and the other one is external memo from the names internal and external i think they do not pose much problem of understanding the internal memo this is the type of memo used within a particular organization or institution or establishment as the name implies it is meant for internal consumption or when a memo circulates within an organization that is from a superior officer usually to subordinate okay or subject under him is called internal memo furthermore a memo from vc or registrar to all directors deans and heads of department within the school exemplifies the sense of an internal memo it can also be a memo from directors to deans from deans to heads of department and from heads of department to staff of the department respectively we call them internal memos okay the next one being the external memo this is usually a type of memo that is not meant for internal consumption it is exchanged between two different bodies or official operations maybe from one establishment to another from one organization to another or from one institution to another for instance a memo 
from VC of Nasara State University to a memo of, uh, of consideration and operation to the VC of Federal University of Latvia. Okay? This memo is not internal, it is external because it emanates from this institution to another institution. Every memo has what we call structures or features. The first one is title. This is usually the name of the unit, department, faculty, or directorate, and the institution of attachment, which usually comes first. It can also be a name of an association, among others. Upon seeing a member, one is supposed to know where it emanates from and which is encompassed in the title. Okay, for instance, Nasara State University, Faculty of Arts, Department of English. This is the title now. It shows the institution and where the department like is domiciled in, that is a faculty institution then faculty before the department and that is just what we see about uh title the next one is heading or uh, heading segment this includes information such as memo type is it internal or external you have to write two there are some things under this heading segment after the memo type which can be enclosed in tabular form or it can be removed from the tabular form to from and date and even ref reference number it depends actually on the nature or what kind of a uh, memo it is but these three must be there from to and date all are under the heading segment the readers when you say to it means reader's correct official name and or job title or even C distribution when the audience are many. For instance, to maybe all staff of department of English from then head of department. The date must be complete and current. You call all these things as elements we find under the heading segment every memo must have the from the to and the date okay the memo again has the subject or the title the subject or the title for you to write a memo after the heading segment you must have the subject matter or the title okay and this subject matter or title has to do with the main idea the, what prompts you to even write the memo for instance it is just to like disseminate information about a meeting so after the heading segment which we mentioned then the title now is maybe um submission of examination questions submission of examination questions this is the title that comes after the heading segment and under this you now be brief in this way i write to request all staff or all lecturers of the department to submit their questions against preparation for the forthcoming examination of the school first of you are to comply please full stop oh you see you are just brief it's just to send them notice of what they have to do so this is called a memo and memo one memo can serve more than one person unlike a letter a letter is either to this person or to that person but one memo can serve different what people and this is why in the uh, heading segment when we mentioned two we say two here can take c distribution and to say c distribution it means when you finish writing the memo the last thing to do is to write what c distribution and you mention if the recipients are 20 or 15 or 10 you can write their titles or names there and that same 
memo can circulate and save the purpose of your own target or reasoning so this is what we call the 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 heading that is subsumed in the introduction and the body of this particular memorandum so after the title i said the next feature is what introduction you introduce like the, the uh, this is just to notify you on the need to submit you you see you are introducing then the body you can also give the venue the time at which everybody is supposed to make submission of their questions that is all included in the body that is after the introduction then the conclusion you can now see you are complying please or this is for your compliance unfailingly so you see this particular memo too has what introduction it has body and it has what conclusion then the last thing there is signature signature the writer has to sign and the signature is followed by what name of the writer name of the writer since in the heading segment we say from will take for instance the title of the writer for instance head head no need of writing head of department because already the title is having department of english then head you see you're not writing the person's name then lastly when you sign you have to write what the name of the writer or the writer has to write their own names and in essence and in nutshell these are the only features of memorandum one title two heading segment three memo type four subject matter five introduction six body seven conclusion and eight signature which is followed by name so if you take this into cognizance you are good to go in writing your own memo that is it for memorandum the next topic is curriculum vitae curriculum vitae but before this sorry to take you back to memo again there are instances where you have to write copy or send copies of the memo to some offices. For instance, if you are giving a query to a staff in your department, you can give like a, a you can create a segment for CC. CC. Okay. CC is just to mention the offices where copies of that memo can go for instance you are giving query to your member of the uh, staff in the department and you have to send copies of the memo being given to the member to the dean of the faculty and even the vc so under cc you have to di di dictate the name of the offices you are sending the copy of that memo to so actually we may say these particular features we have given depend on the kind of memo that is in operation it there are ones that are optional and there are ones that must be there like the title must be there the heading segment must be there okay the memo type must be there the heading must be there or the subject matter i mean must be there the introduction the body and the conclusion but distribution depends on when the recipients are more than one that you cannot write them in the the heading segment okay so you have to create distribution as a feature then if you are sending copies again to some people to recognize the activity that is happening or what you are doing officially then you have to create a kind of feature again we call cc okay copies to be sent to some offices then you have to place them in order there that's it 
and for your own important consumption okay as i said curriculum vitae another name for curriculum vitae is resume this term is used to refer to the official document a person uses on which important details about them are accounted and not in a narrative form it is a summary of one's personal details academic and other professional accounts and experience among others furthermore the cv is also known as resume as we mentioned and it is prepared in order to accompany an application letter for employment that specially takes the reader to the picture of the writer's identity and achievements in life it also has its own features and the features are as follows one title this includes the full official name of the writer okay written in bold and in capital form and the contact address the home address the email address and the contact or mobile numbers respectively all at the top of the resume so on picking your resume we should be able to see you capturing all these things in your title then the next one is career objective though not everybody uses it it is optional if you like you put it if you don't like you don't put it this is usually a statement that specifies the exact type of job one is looking for and in what ways they are qualified or fit for the job however it is optional as i've already mentioned the next one is personal data or information this is where the writer presents items such as date of birth place of birth local government area state of origin gender nationality religion marital status okay and even languages spoken and this also has some effects depending on who the writer is my cv and your cv must not be the same different people have different cvs because we have different experiences we have different achievements and the rest so it means even at this level of features of cv features of cv we do not see a kind of um people writing the same thing okay people writing the same thing in different ways a fresh graduate would have uh his own cv different from how a person who is into lecturing and a professor would have professor cv and your cv must not be the same it must not be the same yes so after personal data okay after personal data the next thing is educational background with dates educational background with dates educational background with dates this constitutes both schools attended and qualifications obtained with dates which can either be written together with the qualifications or certificates or can be separately dealt with okay it means when we say educational background with dates we're referring to two things one the schools attended with dates and two qualifications or certificates obtained from the schools with dates if you like you have two choices here you can bring the two together you now write national state university comma kefi okay you come down and put bachelor of arts degree in english then you put the date there you see you're writing the two at the same time school and qualification you have or certificate you have obtained but somebody can write or create a kind of a subheading schools attended with dates the person would mention schools all attended that is starting from where you are now before go taking your readership back to where you have started from that is from university then before secondary school and before primary school but somebody would also do the two at the same time as i've already mentioned but if you are separating then schools attended with dates okay then and if you finish mentioning all the schools then you now create another heading and tagging it 
certificate obtained with dates so you see in this one you are now um referring to to the fact that okay you you have separated the schools from the certificates but if you like you can put the two together whichever one you do is correct the next one is work experiences or positions held with date this section constitutes the job history of applicant or their responsibilities held which are very crucial as they seize the attention of the employer here one presents the most recent okay work or position and goes backward okay now for instance you have worked with a school in secondary school for instance you have worked and you 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 set them the function of maybe patron of press club or patron of jet club you see first you have to identify that yes a teacher okay comma government secondary school yellow okay you now put the date from when you started and to that particular time you are still in the business okay so after that you have to recognize what other responsibilities you've held okay it's also very important as it gives the concept of what we call work experiences and the positions you have uh, uh held in the workplace the next feature is community services rendered with dates community services rendered with date this is different from work experiences as community services you even use your money to do them you use your money to do them but work experiences you get paid there are rules guiding it for instance a teacher in a government secondary school is officially recognized as a, a part of the government of that particular time as the government is paying them but community services for instance you can build a kind of a, 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 a structure that is having three classrooms then you now put jam candidates in one other ones writing wag and echo in in one and those who are trying to even start the, the the preliminary stage of learning in one you are using your money okay to pay all these people teaching them in fact there is no admission anybody can come this is what we call community services it is unlike work experiences because this one it is what you do out of your own take from maybe where you are working officially this sometimes is mistaken for work experience because they seem to be the same but yet different this however entails on any service you render or work you do when one does not get paid or is not strictly conditioned for some things the next thing is skills acquired with dates this is also different from work experience and community services this entails on any added knowledge one has in doing something like carpentry okay like computer operation all these things now if you are into them you are having skills of doing them and they serve different purposes from your your work experiences for 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 instance they are skills you have acquired that you may not even explore any workplace you can stay in your house and you'll be doing your things there are also work experiences and the rest the next thing is though this one is optional as it has to do with who is writing the cv it is called publications with dates okay if you have published any book in your life or journal articles or monographs or chapters in book and or in books and the rest you can put them here the titles okay and uh, where you publish them then the dates all are important to show your exposure in life then the next thing is membership of association membership of association here if you are a member of any association you can just put we have conferences attended with dates this is majorly for scholars or lecturers or even people in some workplaces that have conferences they attend they can also put 
workshops attended with dates yes it's another feature if you have attended any workshop you can put awards received with dates if you have been given any awards you can put and the rest all these things depend on who you are so we do not have a centralized composition of the features of a cv no it depends on who you are but majorly the following must be there one every cv must have personal data or information two schools attended with dates three academic qualifications obtained with dates then we have what uh no work experience too depends on whether you have worked somewhere or not then hobby you must have hobby in your life 41 so it is also part of uh what we call uh features of cv then the last thing that must be there is what references uh i mean referees sorry referees that is these are responsible individuals the applicants know who also know them in return and can defend them by attesting to their good conduct or manner or even mannerism and that what the applicants provide in their cv is nothing but the truth it is usually against the ethical provision of developing cv that the applicant uses any blood relations as their uh, referees you do not use your father as your referee or your mother because they can simply lie they can go to jail with you they can sacrifice but if i don't know you as my relation we are not related by blood i only know you as a friend and you are using me as your referee whatever it is i will say the truth about you because i can't accept going to jail because of you so this is why the ethical thing to be held here is that you do not use your your blood relation as your own referee so these are very important for you to take note of and um you have to know that not everybody's cv must be prepared and must take all these characteristic features at its flesh it depends on who the writer is as we mentioned and the current work or place or previous place of the writer and whatever have to be captured in such a way that they do not tell lies about the person and there are other features that somebody especially a scholar or a lecturer can put like teaching experiences and courses taught with dates student undergraduate research uh, projects supervised with dates student postgraduate thesis or dissertation supervised with dates sample of in fact curriculum vitae that i will give you now we tell you and rewiding your scope of understanding what we have mentioned or so from what you are seeing here you see we are we have the the title here as I've, I've already told you written in capital letters the content address the home address uh is here then the mobile number the email address personal information you see date of birth i have said the state of origin nationality languages spoken religion gender marital status and at this point marital status to show you that you you must not write in the same way another person write if your marital status is single you put or your marital status is uh married then you can also go to the extent of writing the, the numbers of children or the numbers of wives you have under this one and the numbers of female children numbers of male children can also be included but if you are single you see you have nothing to do with it you can just leave it like this so mine and yours must not be the same academic qualifications obtained with uh schools attended and dates you see it's here as a sample okay uh doctor of philosophy in english language national state university kefi okay national certificate of education nc Egyptian college of education the date is here so all these things masters of arts english language national state university kp bachelor of arts in english you see depending on which one comes now and which one is or has come before now you have to start from where you are then you go back that is how you're supposed to write it their work experiences you see 
there are samples here for you to see um, and consume all these things have to do with work experiences community services rendered with dates you see there is sample here Ubedullah's English Coaching Class YouTube channel username Ubedullah Muhammad Bello date you see everything is there assistant class rep department of english all these things are community services we've done them and nobody has paid us uh anything so awards received with dates you see uh interest and activities or hobbies another name for interest and activities uh is hobbies then teaching reading writing then the referees and under this referees too i've uh, explained and one thing is supposed to be known by you you your referees has to be or have to be rather uh three though you can use one but it's an injury to you it's very risky two two is risky advisably we say you put three and the reason is if you write one person's name on the person is showing you that yes i'm with you but the person does not even like you you can tell them that do not give him the work this person is useless this and that you don't even know if you write two person uh persons rather this person is saying you are good and the other person is saying you are bad you see the organization will have a kind of a difficulty of knowing the reality about your conduct or your manner this one is saying you are good the other one is saying you are bad which one do they take they they're going to be in a ca casket of like doubt of what you are really in terms of your manners or mannerisms but if you use three two say the same thing and only one is saying the other way around it means they will be satisfied that yes these two that say the same thing are really saying what you are and the other person is just maybe saying something else this is it for this particular course advanced english composition and i believe by this we have done you'll be able to write your speeches you'll be able to write your minutes you'll be able to write your memorandum and you'll be able to prepare your curriculum vitae or resume thank you for listening and i wish you all the best in terms of your academic pursuit i remain your one of i remain one of your own Dr. Obeidullah Muhammad Bello.